Now in this video I'm going to cover how to go from digital photography to analog. I'm not saying it's going to be a replacement, but it's always nice to have more skills under your belt. The main momentous occasion is choosing your first camera. So when it comes to film cameras, it's a little different than choosing a digital camera. Digital cameras determine the image quality that you're going to get. On the other hand, film cameras are only the little box that the film goes in. This means that your image quality is determined by your lens plus your film stock and whatever developing process that you go through. At the end, you might want to get digital scans done and that also affects your image quality. Now, the easiest way to go with film cameras is to go with an SLR. That's probably what you're shooting on now, but it's just a DSLR. Now, if you're shooting Canon cameras, going to a Canon SLR isn't going to really have any benefits. But let's say you're shooting Nikon. If you're on a Nikon system, all your film lenses are going to be able to work with your Nikon camera. If you're shooting on a mirrorless system, it's really easy to be able to adapt film lenses onto your mirrorless camera. Canon, it's not so easy when it comes to their SLR range. A few SLRs I'd consider choosing when you're choosing a film camera is a Canon AE-1, uh, a Pentax K1000, and a Canon FTB. The Canon FTB is going to be uh, more affordable than the Canon AE-1, except it won't have any automatic functions. If you're going to splurge a little when it comes to film SLRs, you might want to go with a Nikon F3. Those cameras are legendary. Now the nice thing about choosing film is that you're barrier to entry is really low. You can find good working SLRs for around $50. Now the next step is choosing your film stock. Film comes in three main categories. This is color negative film, color positive film, and then black and white. The difference between color negative film and color positive film is that there's a completely different chemical process to developing the images. Color positive film is going to be harder to develop because there's lots of places that actually do it. The easiest way to go is color negative film. A few good and cheap film stocks I recommend are Kodak Color Plus, Fujifilm C200, and Kodak Gold, and Kodak Ultramax. There's a lot of different ways that cameras load film, so it's important to look at tutorial videos for each camera. The nice thing about film cameras is that all your controls for exposure are dedicated dials or they're found on the lens. So unlike the DSLR that you might be shooting that has one dial to control your shutter speed and aperture, film cameras will have a dedicated aperture, ISO, and shutter speed dial. Now it's important that if you don't know the basics of how to get a good exposure to look into that. Film can be less forgiving because you don't get immediate feedback as to how your shot turned out. When it comes to getting your film developed, it doesn't have to be complicated. So if you go to a local film processing lab, they'll take care of all the developing and scanning and prints if you'd want. This all seems like a lot, but when you compare the barrier to entry in terms of cost compared to digital and film, you can get started in the film world for under $100 easily. You're gonna realize that when you shoot film, it might be a more complicated process, but when it comes to editing and going through your photos, it's a whole world better. The reason being is that you have less total images to go through and that all the color is being done on the film. So even though you might spend 30 minutes trying to get that right film look on a digital photo, you will get it instantly on film. Now to end off this video, I'm gonna go through some of my favorite photos I've taken on film. Enjoy.